lot of uh, about homesteading is uh, growing your own food and being self-sustaining. Today I wanted to show you how to brew your own beer. Actually my friend John here is going to teach you how to brew your own beer. Hello world! Thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is Mickey. I live here in the great state of Texas with my dog Buckshot and I am on a homestead journey. Um, in case you haven't seen any of my previous videos on this channel, um, I try to entertain you. I try to uh, take you along for my journey and tell the story of my homesteading experience. Um, a lot of uh, about homesteading is uh, growing your own food and being self-sustaining. Today I wanted to show you how to brew your own beer. Actually my friend John here is going to teach you how to brew your own beer. How you doing, team John? Up. I'm doing great, Mickey. Thanks for having me on your channel today. It's fun to have you over in Buckshot and make some beer this evening. Now, John's also actually a really good banjo player as well. Which He's, is how we met. As exactly, a fact, we yeah. did. It was kind of kismet. Uh, we met playing uh, playing old time banjo out at a, a little local bar here in the area. But um, John, you're uh, you're a geologist. A geologist by. Uh, profession I suppose and uh, many things by hobby and a uh, dad and a husband and one of the things that I don't see other um, homesteading channels on YouTube doing is talking about brewing beer um, you know making their own wine I might be just missing that if you are a homesteader who has a channel and you're making your own beer or wine or um, maybe it's mead uh, leave me a comment down below I'd love to hear from you well thanks for having us over yeah and we'll get started so to start out with, let's talk a little bit about um, what tools, um, what parts are involved. What's the equipment. With, yeah, what's the equipment what do you involved need? with all this? Yeah. All right. So a couple things. I brew in a large kettle. This one is about, I don't know, three and a half, four gallons. Uh, a bigger one would be ideal, but it, you can do it in one this size. I have a thermometer and a big stirring spoon. It could be wood and it could be metal. It's fine. Uh, but that's what I'm going to brew in. Some other uh, things I'm going to use are buckets. Um, these are fermenting buckets. Uh, you can see I've got um, two buckets here. One has a spigot on it. So that's the one I would use for bottling beer if I'm putting it in bottles. And I also have a carboy, which is uh, a nice thing to ferment in, but it can be done in either bucket or carboy. You called it a carboy? Yeah, it's a glass. I have a glass carboy. They, they make plastic ones too. That's probably about $30. Um, a set of equipment, all this stuff might cost you $70 to $100. Um, but there, there are many things that would serve the job. Just needs a, a tight fitting lid with a, a blow hole for, to vent gases. The last thing, well, two things maybe you're looking at. This is the most interesting one, I think. Reminds <laughs> us of moonshining. But this is just a funnel. I, I'm gonna use a funnel to Put things in the carboy for example and this is a it's called an immersion chiller but basically it's just a coil of copper tube and i'm going to be able to run tap water um, straight through that tube into my fermenting bucket i mean sorry my, my boiling kettle when it's got hot boiling beer in there and cool it down you don't need this but it's a nice makes mix. life easier yeah. you can also submerge your bucket in an ice bath or um, just wait and let it cool, which is not ideal. But. Okay. Last thing I got is a little scale to measure ingredients. And I think that's the next thing up, Mickey. And a beer. Yep. <laughs> so one of the most important things in being able to make good beer consistently is using clean sanitized equipment to ferment your beer. And basically, after you're done boiling it, you've got a sugary, warm pot of deliciousness that a lot of bacteria and yeast would like to get their, um, their filthy little mitts on. <laughs> but you just want that one yeast to ha have free reign in the whole batch. So the way to ensure that, that your, your chosen fermenting yeast, in this case it's going to be a lager yeast, a Bavarian lager yeast, doesn't have any competition, is to thoroughly clean and sanitize any, any buckets or hoses that you're going to use. Um, this is a racking cane and a, a quarter inch rubber hose. You're going to need 
to pass the beer through that at some point, it's gotta be clean. So there's a couple things I use. There's a lot of different ways to do this. Bleach is one, um, but Star Sand is a, I think it's an oxygen-based sanitizer um, that just, I have a little bit in here and I spray any surfaces with this. And as long as it coats for 30 seconds or a minute, it's, it's pretty clean. And then a, a stronger cleaner if, if you need to really soak something and get some gunk off of it. This is a PBW. So I've been, Mickey, I've, I've spent the last uh, 30 minutes or so cleaning out my buckets of and my, my all my plastic, my funnel. I got a, a sieve that sometimes I use. Um, this, this tubing um, hose for bottling and for uh, racking, which is when you move beer from one bucket to another. And now we're, we're ready to go, but this takes about 15 or 20 minutes, depending on how much equipment you have and um, just a small chore to be done. Every time you brew or bottle or um, shift your beer around. So. so just like with anything we eat or drink, cleanliness is next to godliness. Yes. You gotta be nice and clean and in the case for of a beer, good product. Cleanliness, cleanliness produces consistency. And that's uh, so, something that most brewers and bakers and cooks uh, aim for, aspire yeah. toward. done cleaning all the equipment and you've started heating up some water here that you're going to end up using to actually um, brew the beer That's as right. they call it um, what's the next step so the next step or maybe the first step but we're just going to talk about it in this order is uh, to make your recipe so then this is actually the first first step but I'm just gonna we're gonna go through it right now while we got water heating up so what are the ingredients in beer? Um, Mickey and I are making a classic German beer, which uh, we were talking about the German purity laws, and that's, that's the rules that there's only three ingredients in beer, four, it's like water, barley, malted barley, hops, and this is a pelletized version of the hop. It's been processed into these little green crushed pellets that look like guinea pig food and I, I, my guinea pig might actually <laughs> like that but uh and then yeast and uh we'll talk about yeast later that that goes in at the end of the, the process but the first thing to do is to decide what malts you want to use and that provides your sweetness your body the um the color and the the flavor a lot of the flavor uh, in your beer so we're doing something called partial grain brewing, which means that this is uh, this is malted barley. It's called Vienna malt, and that's the particular kind, Vienna malt. But uh, here I also have uh, something I'm gonna include in this recipe called Caramunic. And this one is a little bit darker. Let's see if uh, you can see that. And this one smells a little sweeter because it's been toasted at a higher temperature producing more uh, caramelized sugars. Now, this one is even toasted at a higher temperature and it looks like coffee. It's called chocolate malt. It has a roasted character and we're gonna use just a little bit of this, which provides a lot of color. As a home brewer, we're also gonna use a shortcut. And that is, um, instead of using about 10 times this much amount of grain, which we'd need roughly 10 pounds of grain to brew five gallons. We're gonna use uh, some concentrated malt extract, of both a powder and a syrup. And these are slightly different. This is a Pilsner extract uh, in powder form. And this is a, it's called a Munich malt extract, which is a little bit darker color and a little bit more, uh, a little bit more caramel sweetness and, and body to it. Um, but these are gonna be the main source of fermentable sugars in our beer. And so why use the concentrate? I use the concentrate as a convenience. 
because it takes me a lot less time to brew a batch this way, but a, um, a much cheaper way to do it, although more time intensive, is to do what, what's called all grain brewing. And that's a bit more complicated of a process, but um, it follows the same basic steps and it just takes several hours longer um, as you heat the water and extract the fermentable sugars from this kind of malted barley. You talked about using this concentrate and some other things here that, that you've been able to buy and, and we're blessed to be able to buy this stuff on Amazon or from the latest place, right, from all the places. But from a, from a self-sustaining perspective, how would I get these things myself? How, could I grow all this myself? Could you do it in Texas? Would you have to be in a different state to to grow hops or or to, uh, like? Let's start with the extract. How would I get this extract? Well, so the extract comes from malted barley. So we're back to this, and and the malting process to actually make beer um, is probably something that's not doable at home. Now you could grow your own barley, and you could also make beer or fermented. Uh, yeah, fermented beverages from other fermentable sugars like cider would be a much more, um, a much easier uh, boozy drink to make on your homestead. But to make beer, you need barley, which uh, doesn't grow in well, everywhere in Texas, but uh, you might be able to get it to grow in some nice Brazos bottomlands. Um, and then you also need a kilning and a drying process and a, a, a malting. Um, set up that would be pretty difficult to do at home. Some people roast their own coffee, so on a small scale you, you could uh, you could make a process like that work. But but a dehydrator or something you might be able to make beef jerky from a home. No, you, you need you what you need to do is um, harvest oven. the grains and then put them in warm water and until they sprout. And then kiln dry them in an oven or something. Uh, so Again, those things could be done, but they you you need a even drying process, and it would be a um, you you end up with a, a less consistently uh, reliable product. Which, if you're trying to make a particular recipe, um, consistency is key. Yeah. But as a as a homesteader, being able to ferment um, and and I'm not an expert in this by any means, but. Um, Fermentable beverages made of any kind of uh, starch or sugar um, producing fruit, grain, corn, apples, pears, peaches, uh, barley, wheat, any of these things can be uh, can be used to produce fermentable sugars. And uh, a lot of those beverages are then better Better suited for better suited for uh, homesteading in Texas, kind of thing. And, and, and then potentially, what I was thinking was distillation, because ah. uh, that that would uh, kind of maybe smooth out some of the rough flavors of, of fermentation. Um, so some peach brandy, since we have some great peaches in Fredericksburg. You ferment your own peach pe peach uh, wine, and then distill it to make brandy, and uh, that would be a, a good project to do in the hill country, I think, Mickey. So the malt extract syrup yeah. is something that you really recommend people for ease for just ease. go and buy. Just buy it yeah. off of Amazon, get it shipped to your house right. because thankfully even if you're off grid, um, you, can you can still, still get on Amazon get and get them to deliver to your door. <laughs> That's right. I, I use a, a, a company in Minnesota called Northern Brewer and they deliver to my door in five to seven days. Um, they're great. There's there's a lot of options, and if you're lucky, you have a local homebrew shop, and I, I try to patronize them as, as often as I can, too. It's too bad, though, that we can't just grow hops anywhere well, in Texas. Yeah, the hops are, I, I don't think, ideally suited for the climate in Texas, but they can be grown in a lot of places. Um, you need a little cooler weather, but they are a rhizome, and so they come back year after year and get bigger and bigger. Well, should we talk about uh, the recipe? Yeah. Swing into that? Yeah. We're gonna make a, um, a German beer, like I said, a Germ uh, it's like a Vienna lager. This is the kind of beer I'm making tonight. And uh, so I'm gonna use three different kinds of malted barley. This is called Vienna malt. I'll break this, okay. Like I said, it's kind of bready. 
What is that? Is that like um, is that like a cheesecloth? Yeah, it's or? like a cheesecloth sack. Um, I put it in there, mix it up together. I'm going to use uh, about a quarter pound of this Karamunic malt. I'm going to weigh it out here on my scale. There's four ounces. And you can see this is uh, it's that kind of brown colored, sweeter smelling malt. Malted barley, it's gonna lend a little bit of a, of an amber color. And then this, I'm gonna use a tiny bit, maybe about, maybe just about that much, about two ounces. Sure. It's not- so, so you're not brewing something you've brewed before and you're like really nitpicking at the recipe. Well- You're, you're letting things fly by the seat of your pants a little bit. A little bit, that's right, Nikki. yep. What because kind of, it's not what, that uh, exact of a science. Um, a little bit more or a little bit less of this or that will not change the um, the overall character of my beer in the end. So I've got my um, my sack of, th this is, I call these my specialty grains. I'm not gonna get a lot of fermentable sugars out of this, but I'm gonna get a little bit more of subtle flavor. And uh, I'll, I'll show you the difference in, in just a minute. But I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna, I got about two to three gallons of water that's at 155 degrees, 150, 160, somewhere in that 140 to 150 range is ideal, I think. But really what I want to do is just put my bag of grain in some hot water and let it soak for about 30 minutes. I don't even have the, the fire on yet. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to try to extract some of the flavors from that um, that bag of specialty grain. And what I want to show you is the difference uh, between color that a little bit of this dark, dark malt will make. So here I have a German Pilsner, very light colored beer. And here I have, this is called St. Arnold's Bavarian Lager, but it's, uh, it's roughly equivalent to the beer that we're making right now. St. Arnold's is a local brewery in the Houston area. It's, yeah, probably the oldest and, and largest local brewery. And I don't know if you can see a Hold subtle on. color difference there, but in my, uh, this is my right hand. I, that's the color I'm going for. It's, a, it's just slightly amber relative to this nice straw colored Pilsner. And they're both delicious and they're both very similar beers, but uh, this one, a little darker so that's what that's the difference that a, a couple tablespoons of this dark brown chocolate malt will make So what you just did was took the ingredients and heated them in this pot for 30 minutes, yep. right? About and 30 minutes. About what temperature? About 160, now it's down to about 140. It's dropped about yeah, 15 or 20 degrees over that time. Okay, and that was... That's I okay. Mean, now you see it's really, um, I would say it kind of has a look of coffee or a dark yeah. beer now. But if you, if you pour it, it's not, it's not that dark. No. Yeah, it almost looks like tea. Yeah, it looks like it's about the color like of tea. tea. Yep. And I've got this soaking wet, dripping bag of malted barley, which I'm going to let drip for a few minutes and then uh, discard or make pizza or bread or um, really you could add that to any kind of uh, ready pancakes. It does smell like bread. I smell like, I smell bread yeast from here. But uh, that's, and that'd be great compost or pig slop, but uh, I don't have anything to do with it, so I'm gonna 
but it's a trash, which is such a tragedy. It is a tragedy. Yeah. But you homesteader, you yeah, yeah. I'm gonna give it to Mickey. He's gonna put his compost bin. Now we got a little bit of fermentable sugars, and a lot of flavor, and uh, and some color, and we're gonna um, we're gonna crank up the temperature here, Mickey, and boil our malt, malted extracts. And that's gonna add a lot more fermentable sugars and get our beer. Um, the amount of sugar that it needs to turn into a 5% alcohol beer. Okay, so you're going to add the bottle of extract that we already saw. So you're going to crank the temperature up to what? I'm going to just, I want it to boil. So I'm going to crank it up high and uh, and I'm going to stir in my extract as it, as it heats up and boils. And once it starts boiling, then we'll get to the uh, uh, adding of the hops, which is the next thing. Right. Making a Vienna lager. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It'll be ready in two months. So, uh, <laughs> so come swing on. Swing back by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Mickey. I was also gonna uh, just mention a good uh, habit for homebrewers, or you know, I'm sure you homesteaders like to keep track of things. If you're gardening, you uh, it's a good idea to write down what you plant and what strategies you take. So this is my recipe book and I just wrote down the things that I added and I'm gonna write my recipe plan for how much malted extract and hops I use and that way if it turns out good I can go back in a few years and do it again. So Mickey, the next step, we've, we've uh, got our, our sugars boiling from the malted barley and the bar malted barley extract. Um, now it's boiling and the balance to the sweetness of the malted barley is, is the bitterness of the hops. So we're going to take an ounce of German Hallertauer, Hallertauer hops, um, we're going to add it in there right now and we're going to let it boil for 60 minutes. In some recipes, will call for uh, more additions of hops. I'm gonna put one in at the beginning and one in at the, one ounce in at the end, but an IPA, for example, might use six or eight ounces of hops and might be added at, at different times during the boil. But for this uh, basic German recipe, it's one ounce at the beginning and one ounce at the end. We steeped the grain for 30 minutes at 160 degrees, and then we added the sugar, cranked it up to boil, how long was that? That took about probably about 20 minutes to heat up the water, and uh, but we didn't. We don't start timing it until we uh, reach the rolling boil and add the, the first dose of hops. That's the beginning, really, of our, our our boil, boiling the wort. At this point, most beers take around about an hour. And that's that's the, kind of the standard, an hour-long boil, adding hops again at a different schedule. Sometimes I add them at, at the beginning and after 45 and after 55. For this one, it's going to be z zero minutes and 60 minutes. Now we're gonna add our uh, our cooling coil and boil it for 10 to 15 minutes to sterilize it before the end of the boil. What's the cooling coil for? So we can cool the, the hot wort down to a fermentable temperature in as short a time as possible. And fermenting is the point at which you put the yeast in. When we put the yeast in, the, the temperature of the wort needs to be less than 100 degrees, and it'll be 212 when we take it off the boil. We've reached the end of our boil. It's time to add the last ounce of hops for this recipe. This is one more ounce of Hallertau hops, same ones we added at the beginning. 
dump it in, and then we're gonna turn the heat off, and we're gonna start running water through our copper coils that we've been boiling and sanitizing for the last 15 minutes. These last hops, uh, what we're trying to get out of them for the final product is the aroma, the smell of them. And that is a, um, it's a volatile compound that boils off quickly. So really what we wanna do is put them in hot water and then cool the wort quickly, try to preserve some of that, that hop aroma. That's the bitterness versus sweetness story. All right, let's turn on the water and cool this stuff down. Alright, Mickey. We've cooled our, our wort down to reasonable temperature. I only boiled about two thirds of my total volume of five gallons, so I'm gonna add this wort. I'm gonna take the cool the immersion chiller and the spoon out. Take my cool, cooled wort, dump it into my carboy through a funnel and a sieve, just to get out in any thick sludge, hop material. We put a couple ounces of hops in there, so the more hops you put in, the more. Oh yeah, um, during the boil process. Yep. And you can see I've got about three gallons here probably, so I'm gonna add roughly two more gallons of room temperature or cold water preferably. Get the temperature of this down to 90 or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And then I'm gonna pour my yeast in there, let it I'm go to work. Still likes it. Yeah. Right now it's a sweet, delicious drink for any animal. <laughs> or yeast, or bacteria. Add a little more water. I want to aerate as many bubbles as possible is good right now. Try to, and I'll shake it up when I get enough water in there so I can really get a lot of oxygen dissolved in that wart and then I'll pitch my yeast. We've cooled the wart down and filled it up. We got five gallons of, of wart there. We're gonna pitch our yeast and there's a number of different yeast strains. This is a Bavarian lager yeast that I've made a um, a little starter out of, and I'm gonna pour it on in there now that the temperature's below 100. And that yeast is gonna go to town. I'm gonna close it out here. Thank you for joining me. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. And don't forget, happiness is the new wealth.